Infinite Craft. It's this sandbox browser game where you combine four elements to create literally anything. And today we're gonna create art inspired by this game. L let me show okay. you. Okay, I've never played it. <sighs> But here we go. I know how to. I know how it goes. Anyway, let's get into it. Water and fire. Steam. Water and steam. Cloud. Watercolor seems pretty basic. Surely we can get watercolor. Paper artist. Painting in water. <laughs> okay, come on with the wet paint. Okay, what about wet paint water? Puddle. Rain paint. Puddle paint. Puddle painter. Puddle school paint. Puddle paint. Puddle paint. Puddle paint brush. Art. Paint. Six hours later. Flood? Paint. See, it's not- I don't even feel good about it. It's so bittersweet! I'm- I can't. Anita, I can't do it. I'm bit- uh. Okay, so you understand the concept of the game, right? So you see these first discoveries at the top of my screen. In the game, I'm the first person to create these words. So I thought these would be really fun art prompts to create art inspired by these weird words. Starting off with... Pop-Tart Tattoo Artist. Pop-Tart Tattoo! Look at us with our first discoveries. Obviously the first thing you think of when you hear Pop-Tart tattoo is someone with a tattoo of a Pop-Tart, but I thought that was a little bit too obvious. And you know we like to get a little crazy, a little bit creative, a little bit weird, silly. So I wanted to think about if a Pop-Tart got a tattoo. And then I just started to think about, would it be that interesting if a Pop-Tart simply had a tattoo? And even though my solution wasn't any more creative, I started to think about, okay, what what if that tattoo was actually applied to the Pop-Tart? And then I started to think about the anatomy of if this Pop-Tart was walking around, what the icing would be, because technically the icing isn't connected to the Pop-Tart in any way. There are Pop-Tarts with icing and without icing, so maybe the icing is the tattoo? So here we have a Pop-Tart getting a icing tattoo applied directly onto its back as it screams in agony. I don't know, maybe the icing is pipe being hot. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know the anatomy of a Pop-Tart and its nervous system. So there we are. We have a Pop-Tart having its icing or tattoo applied. Chocolate squirt. <laughs> I was thinking diarrhea, but I'm glad they went with chocolate milk. Chocolate milk porn. Chocolate porn. I tried to do chocolate and porn. Y'all didn't let me. Chocolate squirt! That's disgusting, yet we did it. We're the first ones to make diarrhea. Look, I may have drawn a cat taking a poo in my comic Prickle and Pear about two cactus cats, but you know what I don't want to do? I don't want to sit here and draw squirty diarrhea. That's, even I have my limits. So we're gonna go literally chocolate squirting, like a chocolate syrup. Think a hot fudge sundae. But that's boring. I don't wanna draw just a hot fudge sundae. So let's draw an animal inspired by food. I don't know why this came to mind, but I started to think about a puffer fish. And what if that puffer fish was ice cream and chocolate colored? He's got sprinkles on top of him. He gets angry, puffed up, and squirts chocolate at people. That, that completely makes a lot of sense, right? Actually, the more I look at this little guy, the more he reminds me of a cake pop. You know, those balls of cake that are surrounded in icing on a stick, usually with sprinkles on top. That's this little guy. He's just a cake pop that squirts chocolate out at you. You know what? This would have been a good fake Pokemon design now that I'm looking at him. <laughs> He's cute. Panda puff art. That sounds like a fetish. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, that just sounds weird. <laughs> Okay, so we're not gonna be drawing what that sounds like. And to be honest, I don't even know what panda puff art is. Actually, to be completely honest, I don't know how this game works. I wouldn't be surprised if there was like AI involved. Panda puff art is probably just random words that it decided would go together. So when it came to the actual inspiration for this art, I didn't draw something puffy, which I would think is maybe fluffy. Instead, I thought of art 
part of a panda that was being puffed off of the page. Thus, I came up with a drawing of a panda that has been blown magically off of this page, turned into bubbles, and is floating away. Does it make any sense? No, but I really like to draw things that are transparent, goofy looking, poorly drawn. This little guy is cute. I don't know what it means, but I think the drawing turned out colorful and fun and adorable. Look at him go. Where's he going? Who knows? But good luck out there, little guy. Good luck. Man, it's, it's rough. <laughs> why am I like this? Why? Why am I like this? You ever milked a tree before? Yeah, that's because you can't. But what if a bonsai tree had udders or boobs? Look, I don't wanna sit here and draw a tree that has milk coming out of it any more than the next guy. So we're just gonna draw it pre-milking and we're gonna draw a bonsai tree with boobs because why not? There was a video a while ago where I drew sexy fruits and vegetables. So this isn't the first time I've given a plant uh, hips and boobs and looked sexier than it should have for a plant. But it doesn't make it any less weird to think about these creatures have milk come out of them. Anyway, bonsai milk. That's the inspiration for this little guy. She's got boobs and she's very thick. Now, I didn't want to make her too sexy. So for her face, she has a very simple smiley face. Two dots in a line. Look at her. She's innocent. She's cute. And she's thicker than she should be for a bonsai tree. They're always like, uh, stop the, the dirty doll. There comes a time in every artist's career when they have to start drawing not safe for work art. And that time is now for me. When I originally saw the words dirty doll, I thought like a children's toy, a dressed up dolly, got a little bit dirty, you know, like mud. But that's just not interesting to me, drawing a doll that has mud splattered on it. So let's look at this as an adult, a dirty doll. When I think of a dirty doll, I think of a blow up doll. And let me tell you, when I Googled blow up doll, I thought to myself, people actually use these? That's crazy. Also very goofy looking, but kind of fun looking to stylize. So here we are drawing a blow up doll. I feel like for a drawing, this is a very bizarre one. For some reason, I look at this and think she's cute. And I kind of want to put it on my wall. Is this the most inappropriate drawing I've drawn on my YouTube channel? That's hard to say. I've actually drawn myself completely naked and put it on YouTube before. So I don't know. Anyway, here's a blow up doll drawing. Isn't she cute? She's cute. That's disgusting. Years Pop Tart has gone from having a strawberry flavor, a cinnamon sugar flavor, a blueberry flavor, nothing super crazy. But I feel like over the years, Pop Tart, like a lot of food brands, has been like, how can we get people to buy our products? We need to start making crazy flavors. Now, I feel like Pop Tart usually sticks to sweet flavors, different desserts, cereals, they collaborate with other companies. But it's about time they started to go into the savory direction. Let's create an artichoke flavored Pop-Tart. That sounds horrifying. If Pop-Tart were to introduce a, actually no, did they have one? Okay, I didn't find any savory flavors when I Googled it. And when I think about it, it just sounds like, like a pizza pocket. What are they called in America? Oh, I got it, are you ready? Hot pocket. Hot pockets. Maybe they could ease into it with like chicken and waffle, start off a little bit savory and a little bit sweet, and then they can jump into something like pizza. Okay, I've gone completely off topic. I thought it'd be cute to make the icing on top be shaped like the layering of artichoke. Are they called leaves? I have no idea. But they have a really cute sort of scaly looking pattern on top. Would I eat this? Absolutely not. But here it is. It's an artichoke pop tart. Disgusting. to say it. Oh, I got the first micro dictionary. That's cute. Anyway, so give me micro penis. 
A micro dictionary to me sounds like a pocket dictionary, but a much smaller pocket dictionary, so small in fact that you have to carry around a comically sized magnifying glass to even use the micro dictionary. It kind of makes the whole purpose of a micro dictionary pointless because the whole point of having something so small is that you can carry it around in your pocket, but to use it, you need such a large item that it kind of cancels out the convenience. So what is this micro dictionary? made for? Maybe it's made for ants. Does anyone in the comments even remember using a pocket dictionary? I had one when I first went to Japan because smartphones weren't super common yet. Now you can just download an app and have everything on your phone. Wow, technology. I'm old. I just wanted to draw a very, very teeny tiny book with a character holding it and their eye being absolutely largely magnified while they read this super tiny book. And that's it. That's the drawing. We have a blue cat holding a magnifying glass and looking up a word in this micro dictionary. What word is this cat looking up, I wonder? Boobies. I thought that was, I thought that was grandpa, not grand porn, but okay. <laughs> grand spitting. Mm. This is another one of those prompts where I looked at it and thought to myself, I don't want to draw what it's actually supposed to be, so let's put our creative minds to it and create something a little bit more silly and fun. Originally, I was thinking a grandpa walking down the street and spitting. Mmm, that's gross. No, thank you. But then I started to think about an animal that spits, which is a llama, and maybe there's just an old grandpa llama with a cane, so a, a llama with a cane, and he's spitting, and for whatever reason, I thought he needed to be pink because I just thought pink would be cute. So here we have a cotton candy pink old man llama spitting. It's that simple. Judging by the way we got to this word in the game, this is a much better, visually more appealing drawing than what it probably should have been. Is it the most creative? No, but look at him. He's just an old llama spitting and, and doing what llamas do. Use canes, yep. Fashion fruit. Fruit fashion. We have too many first discoveries. <laughs> So I was thinking about how to approach fruit fashion. And at first I was thinking creating some clothes that were inspired by fruit that had fruit elements. And I just started to think, what if a bird put a banana peel on and wore it as is? What if the banana peel itself was the fruit fashion. It's literally just fruit. That's fashion. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, this bird looks like a banana wizard. It's a banana wizard. The hat is the top of the banana. It kind of looks like a wizard hat. It's pointy. The banana peel is definitely cape-like. I also wanted this little guy to match, so I made it a toucan so that its beak could be warm, colorful colors to go along with the banana. It's tied together with a little string, a little bow on its neck. I bet this little bird goes to wizard school and it is just the most fashionable bird that there ever was. I mean, this, this is fruit fashion. Unfortunately, like fashion, it goes out of style and by out of style, it rots and it stinks and it smells. So that sucks. Silly little animal doodle stickers are available in my shop, caseygolden.com. Go buy them. That's cute. Patreon richer. <laughs> Patreon rich? Patron. Shout out to my patrons. It's the end of the video. Thank you so much to all my patrons for their monthly support. Link in the description if you would like to join. And thank you guys all so, so much for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.